Are you thinking of moving to Canada or getting a permanent residency? Then you have to know about PTE core exam. This new English proficiency test developed by Pearson has been available for booking since February 2024. And I was very curious about the test, so I took it on the 27th of February. Let's have a look at my results. As demonstrated, I achieved a perfect score mainly because of my extensive experience teaching PTE academic, but PTE core has more general English and uses questions from real life and workplace scenarios. My name is Moni and in today's video, I'll be guiding you guys through PTE core exam. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please hit the subscribe button below. First of all, let's start with some important facts about PTE core exam. So first of all, the purpose of PTE core exam is to test general English, while PTE academic tests more academic English. So general English means that the content of the test will include, you know, mat materials, questions related to everyday life and workplace scenarios. Like they will be using some videos, podcasts, work meetings, etc. For PTE academic, the content will be related to study and professional skills. So more academic content, a lot of lectures, interviews, uh, etc. In terms of acceptance, we all know that uh, we can use PTE Academic to apply for visas in Australia and New Zealand. You can also use it for study in other countries like UK, US, Canada. For PTE Core, the only acceptance at the moment is by the Canadian government, IRSS, for all work and migration visas. In terms of the structure, PTE Core has four skills starting with speaking, then writing, reading, and listening. And there are in total 19 question types. You will get 52 to 64 questions. It sounds like a lot, but actually the duration of the test is approximately two hours. When I did my test, it was only for one and a half hours. So I finished my test a bit earlier. The interesting fact about PTE core, same as academic uh, exam is that there will be integrated skills testing. For instance, if you do speaking, you also get points for listening and reading. If you do writing, you also get points for reading. So you always have a chance to gain points from another section. Except for speaking points, you can only uh, get the speaking points from the speaking itself. This is how the score report looks like. You all already saw my score report, but uh, basically this is the, the new score report in yellow color. But on the score report, you will see your communicative skills starting from 10 minimum to 90 maximum. Uh, scores are typically available in two days. For some reason, my score report came out only after four days of waiting, probably because I got 90 all bands and PTE core just came out. So maybe that's why it took a bit longer. The score's validity is for two years. Along with your score report, when you log into your PTE account, you will be able to see your skills profile. And this is a more detailed breakdown and feedback about your performance. So for instance, you can see uh, your the bar here, you know, like if it's full, then you did pretty well. If it's not, then you might need to do some improvement. But you just need to click on each of the the criteria, the areas you have to improve, for instance, with short writing or extended speaking. Based on the feedback, you will know how to improve for the future test. Pearson also released a Canadian language benchmark scoring, CLB, depending on how, like how many points you need for your Canadian visa, like nine or eight, you should, should be able to see the you know, the respective scores in PTE core. How to book PTE core is very simple, same as PTE academic exam. You just need to create an account on pearsonpte.com slash book. You just have to wait for the activation of your login. Then you can just log into the account and just input all your details. Please make sure that the details of your booking, including your names and date of births, have to match with your with your ID. 
We have a lot of cases where a student didn't input their middle name, so they were not allowed to take the test. So it's very important for you to enter all details correctly. Now let's have a look at the exam structure and exam pattern, as well as some strategies you guys can use to better prepare for the test. PTE core exam will start with speaking and writing, and the duration would be for about 46 to 67 minutes, depending on how many questions you get. And then you will do reading 27 to 38 minutes, listening 30 to 37 minutes. Okay, so let's start with speaking. Uh, before you start your exam, uh, they will give you a chance to check your headset, your microphone, your keyboard. Okay, so what you need to do is you just need to listen to the recording to see if you can hear the audio properly, and then you can adjust the volume. And you also have a chance to um, record your voice and then listen to your recording again just to test the quality of the microphone if you notice any problems like noises or like any plosive sounds make sure to raise your hands and raise your hand raise your hand and let the exam invigilator know so that maybe they can change to another headset the first part is personal introduction even though this task is not scored you still have to do well because the system is just trying to familiarize itself with your voice, with your accent, your pitch. You have uh, 25 seconds to prepare and then you have 30 seconds to record your response. Try to keep the answer very simple and you can even prepare a template or like prepare answer prior to the exam because it's just one response, right, about yourself, uh, like your interest, your background, your age. Uh, your work. The next part is read aloud. This is a very important task because it gives you points not only for speaking but also reading. In this task, you are given 40 seconds to prepare to have a look at the text or even to read it out loud. And then after 40 seconds, you will hear a beep and you will have to record your answer. You will be given 40 seconds to record your answer. Tips here is you have to speak with the speed of three words per second. The reason being is that that's the speed of a native speaker. So pay attention to pronunciation. Uh, when you speak, make sure to open your mouth so that you're not mumbling, you know, like this, our major conclusion. So open your mouth, our major conclusion, so that everything you speak sounds clear and easy to understand. Fluency is key. Uh, avoid any fillers. If you pause for more than three seconds, then the computer will stop recording. The next one is repeat sentence. This is one of the most difficult uh, question types in the PTE exam, but it's also very important. You will get somewhere between 10 to 12 questions in repeat sentence. Your task is to listen to a sentence once only, and you will have to repeat the, the sentence exactly as you hear it. Okay, for this task, make sure to pay attention to keywords like subject, verb, object. You can even take notes uh, with initials on the erasable notepad. In the exam, you will be given an erasable notepad and two pens. Feel free to take notes if you need to. It's very important for you to speak with a steady pace because when you start speaking fast or you try to imitate the native speaker, you tend to miss some syllables and it can affect your pronunciation also affects your content and content is important for the listening points the order of the words matters we recommend speaking at least 50 percent in order for you to get two points for the content if you have the sentence like please repeat the sentence exactly as you hear it and then you say please repeat exactly as you hear it so this will be even though you missed the word the sentence but because you were able to repeat the sentence in the correct order, you will still gain at least two points. The next part is describe image. Uh, in this task, you will be given an image. It can be bar chart, line graph, uh, diagram, pie chart, table, maps, any images. And you have 25 seconds to prepare. Then you will have 40 seconds to give your response. Even though you are given 40 seconds, but it doesn't mean that you will speak for 40 seconds. You can speak for around 30 or like 35 seconds. Fluency is very, very important. So you can use a template to maintain fluency because some students have a tendency to think what to say. 
so they end up losing fluency. So use a template. Focus on important keywords of the image. For instance, in this image, uh, the title, yeah, illustrative estimate oil production capacity, uh, or, and then focus on the highest and the lowest values. Like here in the year 2000, yeah, and then the year 2005 is the lowest. And speak for at least 30 seconds. And again, it's describe image, not analyze image. So you don't have to input any of your personal opinion, personal analysis. Only speak what is shown on the image. So try to avoid any fillers or any hesitations. This is a very new task. We don't have this task in BTE academic exam. With response to a situation, you are given a situation. You will be able to read the situation and they will also play the audio of the situation, like the exact same text. Uh, you will be given 10 seconds to think about what you're going to say and then you will hear a beep and they will give you 40 seconds to answer the question. So with this one, for instance, you've just arrived at the hotel that you booked two weeks ago. The room facilities are awful and not as promised on the website. What do you say to the hotel manager? When answering this question, try to include keywords from the question in your answer. Like the, the keywords will be arrive at the hotel, uh, booked two weeks ago, room facilities, awful, not as promised on the website, yeah, hotel manager, and have a structure for your answer. Start with a greeting, like, hello, my name is, or like, good morning, my name is, hi, how are you? Yeah, use common words depending on the task, like, I'm sorry, thank you, could you please? And if you speak too fast and you finish very early, like at 20 seconds, and you still have some time left, then you can also repeat or rephrase the answer uh, if you still have plenty of time. The last part of speaking is answer short questions. This task will give you points not only for speaking but also for listening. You will hear a question uh, and you will have to give a simple and short answer. For instance, they will ask you how many years are there in a decade? The answer is 10. So you can say 10 or you can say 10 years. This task is more about your listening skills, are you able to understand the question and also your vocabulary level? In order to master these question types, feel free to practice more on our platform with the past question banks. Moving on to writing, you will have summarized written text. You will be given a passage and your task is to summarize it using one sentence. You will be given 10 minutes, including the reading time, and your task is to write between 25 to 50 words. Always make sure to check the timer on the top right corner. And remember that you can only write one sentence. If you write more than one sentence, you will automatically get zero points for this task. You have to include important keywords in your answer, which are the topic of the passage, any related words, repeated names or vocabulary. Let's say your topic here is skipping breakfast, Keywords here would be exercise, yeah, high body mass, okay, hectic life, all right, uh, health. So all of these words are related to this topic. The next task is pretty new for BTE. They just released it specifically for BTE core exam and it's called write email. Uh, in this task, you are given nine minutes to plan, write and revise an email about uh, a topic given yeah and you have to write between 50 to 120 words and you have to write at least 100 words what they didn't tell you is that you cannot write more than 140 words and you have to have uh, appropriate vocabulary for each type of emails so if you have informal emails you, you use the words like hi hey um, for closing you can use take care see you later all the best right and then for formal emails you can use dear mr mrs doctor and then their last name and for closing you can use something like kind regards use faithfully if you don't know their name or use sincerely you also have to write somewhere between 100 to 120 words in four paragraphs and make sure to check spelling very carefully but like first two important criteria are content and the form Content means 
what you re- what you write have to be re- related to the topic. If you are writing about something else, you get zero points, and if you get zero points, the computer will stop checking your your answer. And the next one is the form. The form means you have to write between 50 to 120 words. Uh, any more than 140 or less than 50, you will automatically get zero points. Uh, please pay attention to the word count and also make sure you're writing according to the topic given. Moving on to reading, we have 27 to 38 minutes. I highlighted here which question types are the most important. So it's reading and writing, fill in the blanks. And then you have reorder the paragraph and also fill in the blanks. Yeah, the first one is fill in the blanks, reading and writing. For this task, make sure to revise grammar rules. Uh, when I did my PTE core exam, I had uh, a few asking, you know, just like in the blanks, I had like verb tenses, different verb tenses, like present perfect, present perfect continuous, past perfect. Also have a look at collocations, like the verb and prepositions, which one goes with which i have a look at different word forms like uh, nouns verbs uh, adjectives and also linking words sometimes they can ask you to differentiate between different linking words like how does this sentence start with however or with although or with uh, therefore okay Uh, and when you read the text don't be panicked by difficult words. Focus on the words you understand. The next one is multiple choice, multiple answers. I don't recommend spending a lot of time on this task because it doesn't give you much points compared to the other question types. And uh, this task contains negative marking. So if you choose one incorrect answer, then you will lose one point. So that's why if you are only sure about one answer, then just choose one option. And if you are not sure about any of them, then you can pick uh, like any three options. And the next one is reorder paragraph. So in this task, you'll be asked to restore the original order of the passage because all of these sentences here are in the incorrect order. So you have to put them in the correct order. Your priority is to find correct pairs because that's how you get points. They will give you one point for each correct pair. We used to focus more on finding the topic sentence, which sentence will will be the first yeah the first uh but uh, lately they have been having a lot of tricky questions where a topic sentence starts with a linking words like starts with however starts with but focus on finding pairs to get more points and for this you can allocate around three minutes in each question the next question type is fill in the blanks reading for this task you should be able to identify what forms like which one is nouns, which ones are verbs, adjectives, adverbs. And uh, in the exam, sometimes you can even read the sentence aloud so that you can better identify the missing blank. MCQ single answers, use scheme and scan method to find the answers. Always read the question because sometimes the question can be just to find an overall meaning of the passage, but sometimes it can ask you for a specific information. Pay attention to the potential synonyms uh, in the options because normally the answers will not be with the words from from the text, but they will be using different words so they paraphrase the answer. The last part of the exam is listening, which lasts for 30 to 37 minutes. And you will start with summarized spoken text. In this task, you will hear a short audio and then you have to write a summary yeah, of what you heard. You can take notes while listening to the audio, even, either on the erasable notepad, or you can also take notes on the computer. And you should write between 20 to 30 words. It doesn't have to be in one sentence. You can write two to three sentences. They will give you eight minutes to finish this task, including the listening time. My personal recommendation is for you to take notes on the computer to get more keywords. Because when you take notes on the computer, it's faster. Normally keywords are nouns, verbs, adjectives, any names, numbers, dates. Try to write between two to three sentences. And you can also prepare a template if you are not too confident with your grammar. The next part is MCQ multiple answers. So for MCQ, you can choose to take notes or just to listen uh, to understand. Yeah, quickly read the question before the audio starts, like this one here. Which of the following are mentioned as health problems caused by no- noise? Yeah, so it's very important for you to read the question. 
And the answers are normally paraphrased. So it, when you take notes, right, uh, even though you took notes of some words and then they appear here, doesn't mean that they are the answers. Sometimes they paraphrase the answers. So be very careful. Uh, this task also contains negative markings. So please only choose the answer you are confident with. Otherwise, if you're not confident with any answers, then you can pick three options. With this task, you will hear a recording. Uh, you have to type yeah, the, well, the missing blank. Some people choose to take notes on the paper, but, and then some people prefer to type directly on the, the computer, yeah, on the keyboard here. And uh, that's, that's how I do it, and I find it much easier for me. While doing this task, you only choose one spelling. It can either be UK spelling or US spelling. Please do not mix both of them in one task. So for instance, we, if the blank is dogs, but you wrote dog, yeah, singular, then you will not get points for, for that blank. Listen very carefully and also try to identify the grammar. The next one is MCQ single answer. This task doesn't contain much points. Answers again are normally paraphrased and we also recommend to read the question before the audio starts so that you know what to look for. Select missing words, same. This task doesn't give, give you much points so don't worry too much about it. The audio will be for around one to two minutes try to focus more towards the end of the audio because in this task at the end of the recording the last word or group of words will be replaced by a beep will be missing so your task is to identify which word is missing so yeah place more focus towards the end of the audio highlight incorrect words i i find this task to be quite easy you will hear a recording and some words that in the in the script are different from the audio. So you have to click on the words that are different. This task will give you points for both listening and reading. Okay, so this task uh, is just before representation, which is the last question type. And some of you might be a bit nervous because you are afraid that you won't have enough time to do representation. But please relax, stay calm. Uh, and just focus on doing your best in this task. The last question type is representation. You will hear a sentence and you have to type the sentence in the box exactly as you hear it. For this question, there's no negative marking. You get one point for each correct word you've written. Maybe sometimes you can add extra words because there's no negative marking anyways. And for this task, you will get points for both listening and writing points. So I recommend you to practice at least 30 questions per day on ptemagic.com because this task is not only about comprehension, like listen to understand, but it's also about your short-term memory. Yeah, if you are able to remember a short sentence in such a short time. And in order to do so, you have to practice and practice. I really recommend to practice on our platform, ptemagic.com. And you can see here, we have prepared some question bank for PTE core exam. Let's go to listening. Right from dictation. Okay, let's try to do one sentence. More time will be needed to process the topic of the project. To process. Yeah, let's just do it incorrectly on purpose. Okay, let's check. Okay, this is the answer and this is what we've written. And good, yeah, this one. This one is correct, but the red one is uh, like we're missing something. Yeah, we're missing the word topic. Yeah, topic of the projects. More time will be needed to process the topic of the project. Okay. So yeah, you can also practice with other question types uh, in the listening section as well as in the other sections here. The PTE core exam in comparison to PTE academic is more practical because it integrates questions that you're going to use in everyday life or workplace situations. 
and this is very important especially if you're going to be living and working in Canada however given its recent introduction there's not many test preparation resources and materials available online and Pearson has not released any mock test for PTE core yet so you guys can check out PTE magic platform because there are some question bank you can practice with please visit ptemagic.com I hope this video was helpful and if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment below and remember to subscribe for more PTE guidance thank you for watching and until next time bye <laughs>